Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. In this video, I'm going to talk about how greenhouse gases have continued to increase rapidly. Um, and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, um, has just um, come up with, um, come out with some reports on actually how quickly the greenhouse gas levels have risen and uh, you know what's what's going on with them um, and while I'm filming this video right now I've got um, the door shut it's an office um, and I've got two windows open right now and the greenhouse gas level in my office the CO2 level you can see here um, on this Aeronet 4 CO2 detector is 536 parts per million. I'm in Ottawa, which is latitude 45 degrees north. Um, it's lower, of course, we know um, at Mauna Loa, it's measured at about 420 parts per million. Um, and uh, outside, you know, I've seen readings as low as like 450 or so in Ottawa, but I carry this around with me. Um, I just got it. It updates every, I've set it to update every minute. You can set it, you know, to update every minute or two minutes or five minutes, I believe. Um, and uh, I'm breathing on it now. So it's recorded a higher, higher number, I guess, because one of the inputs is right over here. Okay. Uh, but what I'm going to do is set it aside. And as this shut the windows and I'll notice it starts getting stuffy in here and I'll check the reading um, when I finish the video. So that's the first thing. And uh, also I like to talk about what books I've been reading or magazines I've been getting. So this is a um, book, uh, a fiction. You know, I always have a fiction on the go as well as a nonfiction. So this um, this is a novel, uh, Bloody Genius, um, by John Sanford. It's a uh, crime novel. It's about feuding between two departments at a, at a local state university, you know, on a battleground of science and medicine. It's quite an interesting book. It's not, it's not a bad read. I haven't quite finished it, uh, but I would recommend it. Um, Corporate Nights is a Canadian um, magazine and I just picked this up this morning. It's a very, uh, it's got a, it's got a, um, good articles. Um, one on climate blockers, you know, the corporate players, not just oil companies that are battling climate policy. But it also lists, I think, the top, uh, the global top 100, the 100 most sustainable book companies in the world. Um, so it's got very good um, sort of analysis. It's called Corporate Nights. Okay, so let's get right into um, my video here. And, uh, okay, so. Okay, but first of all, I want to shut the windows. And let's see how high the, the CO2 level gets in this room while I'm filming this video. You'd be surprised at how quickly um, it, it can rise in a stuffy room situation or in a car, for example. So I had all the windows open in the car and I had Newton and myself in there. And the, the levels were, were about 500 parts per million. And then I shut all the windows and I didn't have any air vents on open. And basically, the CO2 level went up about anywhere from about 50 to 100 parts per million per minute, you know. And when it got up to about the 12, 13, 1400, it was just too stuffy. I opened the windows. So I'm going to be uh, playing around with lots of different um, experiments. And, uh, you know, I'll do some separate videos on it or, inco or I'll incorporate it in videos just as a matter of, of interest. So... Right now, the uh, CO2 level is uh, 774 uh, parts per million. So it's gone back down. I was breathing on it, so it went up higher. We'll see what it, what it is over the course of this video. 
Okay, so this is the article from NOAA. It just came out recently. So CO2, carbon dioxide, methane, CH4, and nitrous oxide, N2O, are all rising into uncharted levels. Okay, so these are the most significant greenhouse gases contributing to climate change. Um, they're continuing their historically high rates. So the global surface average for CO2 rose by 2.13 parts per million to 417.06. Um, atmospheric CO2 is now 50% higher than two pre-industrial levels, which were 280 parts per million. 22, 2022 was the 11th consecutive year that CO2 has increased more than two parts per million. The highest sustained rate of CO2 increase in the 65 years since monitoring began. Prior to 2013, three consecutive years of CO2 growth of 2 p.m. or more had never been recorded. So this is the CO2 curve and uh, it started the, the measurements on Mauna Loa um, in Hawaii um, started about 1979 or so and you can see the breathing here um, as we the seasonal change the the change um, as we go you know in the, in the northern hemisphere in the spring all the buds come out the deciduous trees start forming their leaves that sucks up carbon causes it to drop and it's the highest levels when the leaves uh you know all fall and there's no longer that co2 being consumed so so the the curve here is rising at ever faster rates it's almost rising exponentially atmospheric methane is far less abundant but it's more potent than co2 at trapping heat um, it increased to an average of 1911.9 parts per billion okay and you can see this curve you know, it kind of flattened out from about 2000 to 2007 and it stepped up, stepped up again. And, it, you know, it looks like it's accelerating. You know, this is very worrying because it's got a very large, um, uh, great, uh, very large global warming potential. The 2022 increase was 14 parts per billion, the fourth largest annual increase recorded since NOAA's system systematic measurements began in 1983 follows record growth in 2020 and 2021 methane levels in the atmosphere are now more than two and a half times 250 percent times their pre their pre-industrial level and the third most significant anthropogenic greenhouse gas nitrous oxide rose by 1.24 parts per billion to 335.7 parts per billion. It's tied with 2014 as the third largest jump since 2000 to 24% increase over the pre-industrial level of 270 parts per billion. The two years of highest growth occurred in 2020 and 2021. Increases in atmospheric nitrous oxide during recent decades are mainly from use of nitrogen fertilizer and manure from the expansion and intensification of agriculture. Okay, so greenhouse gases, despite all of the climate conferences, all of the uh, stuff that is being done uh, around the world, um, you know, which countries say they're making progress on climate, you know, this, this metric of, of greenhouse gases increasing at ever faster rates means that everything has been ineffectual, right? At, at stopping um, ongoing rapid climate change. The time is now to address greenhouse gas pollution to lower human caused emissions as we continue to build toward a climate ready nation. This is what uh, a NOAA guy said. Okay, so the NOAA, they have the Global Monitoring Laboratory, the GML. It collected more than 14,000 air samples from monitoring stations around the world, and it analyzed them in Boulder, Colorado. Many of the scientists that work in Boulder, Colorado, remember they, they, a number of them lost their homes uh, just a few years ago in these horrible um, wildfires, brush fires that went into, into the town. 
Um, so they, they uh, basically... Measurements are obtained from air samples collected from sites in NOAA's Global Greenhouse Gas Reference Network, which is more than 50 different sampling sites around the world. And the levels continue to increase rapidly in the atmosphere. It's a clear sign that we need much more effort to, if we hope to stabilize levels uh, in the next few decades. And CO2 emissions are by far the most important contributor to climate change. So they're the main driver of increasing atmospheric CO2 uh, is the burning of fossil fuels with emissions increasing from 10.9 billion tons per year in the 1960s to about 36.6 billion tons per year in 2022, according to the Global Carbon Project. The amount of CO2 in the atmosphere is comparable to where it was about 4.3 million years ago during the mid Pliocene when sea level was 75, meter high, 75 feet higher than today. The average temperature was seven Fahrenheit higher than pre-industrial, divide by 1.8 to get Celsius. So that would be about um, four, I guess. Okay, large areas, large forests occupied areas of the Arctic that are now tundra. Now, about a quarter of the emissions of CO2 have been absorbed by the world ocean, contributing to ocean acidification. Um, the cause of methane increase is not fully known, okay, uh, but it, it's a study uh, suggests that as much as 85% of the increase from 2006 to 2016 was due to increased microbial emissions generated by livestock, agriculture, human and agricultural waste, wetlands, and other aquatic sources. Okay, it includes a whole bunch of different things, so it doesn't narrow it down between them. It says it's cumulative from all these. Uh, increased fossil fuel emissions. We know that fracking you know, has released a lot of methane. We also know that a lot of methane is coming out of um, the... the uh, the, the oil rigs and stuff offshore. Um, okay, so that's the key uh, paper. And then NOAA, this is the Global Monitoring Laboratory. Um, they have an annual greenhouse gas index um, and they monitor and look for changes of all of the different greenhouse gases, including the CFCs, the, the, the HCFCs and so on. Now, it's not just the big three. Um, so it's an excellent website. They, they combine all of these to get the um, annual greenhouse gas index. Okay, and the average annual uh, increase, you know, it's increasing higher and higher and higher. It's, uh, you know, it's about an increase of, an annual increase of about between 1.6 and 1.8% at the moment, but 1.7, which is the highest ever. Um, okay, uh, you can get a CO2 equivalent from that, 508 parts per million. Um, and, uh, yeah, so basically the AGGI in 2021 was 1.49, which means that we've turned up the warming influence from greenhouse gases by 49% since 1990, because the AGGI is re reference to 1990. It took 240 years for the AGGI to go from zero to one. I'd have reached 100%, 31 years for it to increase by another 49%. In terms of CO2 equivalent, we reached 508 parts per million, of which 415 was from CO2 alone. That was in 2021. The rest is from the other gases. Um, a constant concentration of CO2 alone at 550 would lead to an average increase in Earth's temperature of about 3 Celsius, okay? And most uh, people say, you know, 3 Celsius, we don't really have civilization left at that point. This is uh, some more information on the um, annual greenhouse gas index and, you know, where they do the observations all over the world, um, aircraft towers, observatories, discrete surface measurements, you know, these ones are ships, I'm sure, and all the different trends and so on, okay? How, the, how you calculate the radiative forcing and 
you know, the, the different plots and stuff. But I'm not going to go into all, oh, and then how all of these things have, have increased, have changed, you know, over time. So here we go. This is only up to 2021. This, it doesn't have the 22, 2022 number yet. Okay, um, this is a good article in The Guardian that came out that was talking about how these greenhouse gas emissions rose at an alarming rate last year. So we're, def we're heading in the wrong direction, okay? Greenhouse gases are still rising at ever record levels. And um, there, there's an interesting thing here which I want to talk a little bit more about, but I think I'll do this in a separate video. You know, I said that methane levels are now more than two and a half times their pre-industrial level. Of course, the oil and gas sector is the largest industrial source of methane, which can also cause medical complications, fires, and even engine failures, leading helicopters to fall out of the sky. Okay, this is a new one to me. I didn't realize, you know, but low levels of methane... Um, can cause helicopters to, they can choke up the engines and uh, cause these helicopters to crash. And this has happened, I think, you know, about on average, once at one every one and a half years on the, the supply uh, workers to the oil rigs. So over the last uh, number of decades, we've had multiple helicopter crashes because of methane in the air just above the oil rigs. And that, that's new to me. So I'm gonna have a look at that a little bit specifically. Uh, I'll do a separate video on it because I wanna investigate the, you know, what the reports say, et cetera. Of course, CO2 hit the highest sustained rate ever. Greenhouse gases creep towards uncharted level. This is another article about the NOAA report. Um, some more graphs and stuff like that. So there's lots of articles. Uh, this was CBS News. Okay, so there's lots of articles in the mainstream about it. And this is the article um, in DSmog, uh, which starts to talk about, uh, you know, offshore oil, methane pollution, how it's being underestimated. And it's when in this article, it talks about methane causing helicopter crashes, and so I'll continue on in uh, my next video talking specifically about methane in, in uh, offshore oil rigs and uh, how it's been causing helicopter crashes. Okay, thanks for listening. And uh, please consider going to my website, paulbeckwith.net and supporting my research by uh, throwing a, a few bucks my way on PayPal so I stay you know, can, can uh, keep doing this. And before I forget, uh, the CO2 level is, uh, it's 699 in the room right now. I think I forgot, I left some, I forgot to uh, shut a window. So anyway, um, this is, uh, you know, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this CO2 detector, doing lots of different experiments. Maybe I'll work on some ways to capture carbon myself. Okay, thanks for listening and, uh, yeah, bye for now.